Hello, this is Julie Hogue with Vegetarians and Meat Lovers Split Table Recipes, making food for your split table family, people who love meat and people who don't. And it's always so versatile. So hey, it works both ways. I'm so glad you're here. I'm excited to share with you. I love to do this and I want to say potatoes are not boring. They're not. You can do so much with potatoes. So one of my recipes today is about potatoes. I'm going to do a full meal of recipes today, a breakfast meal. I hope you're having a great day, a great weekend, and I have some yummy stuff to share. I've created two new recent recipes that I just love. My family was like, wow, I love these. And then the other one is from my cookbook, One Dish, Two Diets. So this is an egg meal. So it's a breakfast, a brunch. I mean, you could do it for lunch or dinner. Of course, eggs for dinner is a big promoting thing out there. It's uh, become a catchphrase, right? Eggs for dinner. I think that's maybe they're a slogan or they're a commercial or something, but they're smart. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're really smart because eggs are a great thing to have any time of day, especially for vegetarians who consume dairy products, lacto-ovo vegetarians like myself. My whole family loves eggs. When I make scrambled eggs, I was having this discussion with someone once and they just laughed because my three boys love eggs. I make 20 eggs when I make scrambled eggs. And they were like, what? I said, yeah, most of the time I have two to three dozen eggs in my fridge. And when I make scrambled eggs, boom, there goes 20 eggs. So (laughs) my boys love eggs. So I know about going through a lot of eggs. It just was so funny to me because, well, they were um, empty nesters and and their youngest son just went to college too. So he was just like, what, you do that many eggs? I'm like, yeah, (laughs) the story of my life with three boys. Although my oldest is now in college too, but when he comes home, I make 20 eggs for scrambled eggs. And he says the eggs at college are fake plastic eggs. So (laughs) he's eating in the dorm. What do you say? They're cooking for multitudes. It's not going to be like home cooking. So anyway, On to what I'm doing today. I want to thank you for listening to this, and I hope you enjoy this recipe, all three of these recipes, and it's so yummy. I love, love, love egg dishes. There's so many different things you can do, and this is why I created my quiche cookbook, because there's so much you can do with eggs. I know some people try to avoid eggs, but I'm not one of those people, and this is not going to happen on this podcast. Um, (laughs) I know that there are good egg substitutes. I'm not knocking that. But I like real eggs. And so this is what my recipe has. Most of my recipes do contain eggs. Okay, so do you love these bowls that are everywhere? Like a bowl of something. And what I really love about it is you can customize it. Just kind of like building a taco or a sandwich. Build your own foods. Build your own oatmeal bar. I should do a podcast on that one. I have this That just makes me think about how I have this podcast, podcast. (laughs) I have this post on my blog where I have the build your own oatmeal bar. That's a really fun breakfast one. I'm going to have to do that one of these times. Anyways, if you want to find that and you don't want to wait, it is on my blog at juliehokewriter.com. Okay, so back to what we're doing today. Bowls. I love this idea of bowls. So this is an egg bowl, a scrambled egg bowl. And it's just kind of fun having it in a bowl rather than on a plate. I don't know. There's just something aesthetically different about that. And you can just build it how you want. So I love this whole movement of things that are bowls. It's a great way to customize it, to add things that you want to your specific bowl. And this is a great thing for a split table family where some people want certain things and other people want other things. And you can have you know, you can do this recipe that I have, and then you can have things on the side and bowls to add in. Okay, so I'm going to get going with this. So, you know, making food for a hybrid split table family can be a challenge. This is one way that it works very well. And this is something that I started doing, oh gosh, probably way back in college with my husband and he ate meat and I didn't. So I'm like, how can I do this? So I would make food make a, an egg, scrambled egg with a bunch of veggies, and then I would just separate them and add the meat to his portion. So it works really well. And this is what you would need for this recipe. It's a hybrid vegetarian and meat scrambled egg bowls from One Dish, Two Diets, my cookbook. Okay, you need two tablespoons of butter divided, 12 eggs, 
this is going to feed about six people, or in my case, maybe not, because like I said, my boys eat so many eggs. <laughs> so I'll start over. Two tablespoons of butter divided, 12 eggs, one half cup skim milk, one green pepper diced, one red pepper diced, one half cup diced onion, and one small package, about three cups of sliced fresh mushrooms, one 10 ounce can of tomatoes with chilies, one cup pre-cooked sausage or ham pieces, one cup shredded cheddar or pepper jack cheese, and one teaspoon ground red pepper, which is optional, and salt and pepper to taste. Optional ideas to add on the side are salsa, hot sauce, more cheeses, different types, tomatoes, any kind of vegetable you have left over, corn, corn works great, peas, Anything that you have as a leftover veggie, hey, add that on the side. People can add that to their bowl if they want. Okay, so you're going to drain that can of tomatoes with chilies and drain it and blot it with a paper towel to remove the moisture. That's important so they don't get like runny and like liquidy. Add one tablespoon of butter to the frying pan and coat the pan with it. Add the diced green pepper, red pepper, and onion and saute on medium heat until tender, which for me is about five to seven minutes. Then you add the mushrooms and the tomatoes, if you're adding tomatoes, or you could do tomatoes on the side that aren't cooked. And cook that about three to five minutes until the the mushrooms are soft. Scramble 12 eggs in a separate bowl with the milk and ground red pepper. Remove the pan from heat and remove the cooked vegetables from the pan and cover them to keep them warm. Add one tablespoon butter to the empty frying pan and spread it around a coat. Add the egg mixture and cook and stir around to scramble as you normally scramble eggs. Divide the cooked vegetables and scrambled eggs between as many bowls as you desire. And you can either have it on the side or add the cooked meat at this point to the bowls for people who want meat and stir it toss to coat them. So basically you're combining everything right now, the vegetables and the meat to the eggs that you want. And you know, this is so easy. Like if someone doesn't like mushrooms, put them on the side, you know, like it's so easy. You don't have to put it in with the eggs. You can just do it on the side and people can add out what they want. Like my, my youngest does not like, well, my youngest and oldest do not like mushrooms. So I just put that on the side. And then you're going to sprinkle each bowl with the shredded cheese or let the person do it themselves. Maybe people don't want cheese. You know, so it's just so versatile. And you can set up a bar like on your counter and then people can grab their bowl and build it how they want, add what they want. And there's just so many things you could add, you know, cooked broccoli, cauliflower, any vegetables, really, even even potatoes. But in this particular meal plan. I have a potato on the side recipe. So, or, you know, you could take those potatoes, this recipe that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, and you could add that as a potential addition to your bowls as well. That sounds kind of yummy now that I think about it. (laughs) I used to go to this restaurant. We haven't been there in a while. And they would put potatoes with their vegetables in the omelets. And it was really quite good. Like they would you know, either put potato chunks or the hash brown right in the omelet instead of having it on the side. It was really good. And I had not thought of doing that because I'm so used to having it on the side because I do like it with ketchup. But it was really good to have it actually in the omelet as well. So that's another way to think outside the box and try it. And again, that recipe is from One Dish, Two Diets, which is on Amazon in ebook, paperback, in hardcover and even audiobook. And if you get it in audiobook, you also get a copy of the ebook so that you could listen and look at the same time. So you can look for that if you're interested in that on Amazon. And I believe the cookbook is on Amazon and on Audible, the audiobook one. Okay. Now this next recipe is so good. My boys just love it. I love it. It's chocolate, peanut butter, banana bread. So this is, I'm building this as a potential for a breakfast idea. So you're going to have your egg bowls, and then you're going to have your side of chocolate, peanut butter, banana bread, and then you're going to have your potatoes. So this is like a brunch. This is a big breakfast or a lunch or even a dinner. Okay, so this is so good. I just made this this weekend again because I'm testing out the recipe to make sure I like it, and I do. It is chocolate peanut butter banana bread. So it uses Splenda. 
And my oldest, who kind of tries to avoid sugar, is the one that inspired this recipe because he's trying to stay away from sugar. He's a bodybuilder, lifting weights and stuff. And so he's trying to stay away from excessive sugar. And I try to do that too, because it's a great way to, you know, control your weight or even lose weight. And so it has Splenda in it. So so you do one cup of Splenda and one half cup salted butter that's melted. And so you're going to cream that together and stir it. You're going to add two eggs to that and one fourth cup peanut butter, smooth peanut butter. In another bowl, you're going to add two cups of bread flour and one fourth teaspoon salt, one teaspoon baking soda, and stir those dry ingredients together. You're going to combine the wet and dry ingredients and stir them. And it's going to seem kind of dry, so you're going to be like, what the heck, is this right? <laughs> this lady's crazy. You know, just keep doing it, keep stirring it, and it gets, get it as moist as you can. And then you add four mashed bananas. And that's when it really starts to moisten up and look more like a batter. It's a pretty thick batter. It's not going to pour out. You're going to have to scoop it. But before you do that, don't forget to add one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Oh, yeah, that's the yummy part. So stir that up, and then you're going to scoop it into a loaf pan that you've sprayed with olive oil cooking spray. Again, I love the olive oil cooking sprays. Olive oil is so much better for you. And that has been proven. So use that. Don't use the other stuff. It's just olive oil is so much better for you. And you don't notice the difference in taste. So why not do the one that's better for you, right? Then after you scoop it out, and I kind of flatten it, make sure it's kind of flat because it is a thick, thick batter. And then you're going to bake it at 350 degrees for one hour. And so far that has worked for me every time I've done this recipe. And it is so good. I mean, it's just yummy. It's delicious. I love the flavor. The peanut butter is not real overpowering in it. You could add more if you want to try it. That's one thing I do want to try this recipe to see if it tastes any different with more peanut butter. But it's just delicious. And I love the flavor of the banana and the chocolate and the little bit of hint of peanut butter. So that's one thing I want to mess around with is recipe again and try it again and see if I can get, see if it, I like it better with more peanut butter flavor. Because of course, everybody loves that. The Reese's, right? The peanut butter and the chocolate together. So good. So good. And if you want peanut butter or um, if you want an overload, take some Nutella and spread it on the slice of this bread. Ooh, that's a chocolate lover's delight right there. So good. So good. You know, a lot of times we just put butter on banana bread, which is so good. But, you know, there's so many other good flavors you can get, like cream cheese, peanut butter, and Nutella on your peanut, on your banana bread. So good. Try it. So many different things you can do to add more flavor, even to your, your regular banana bread, let alone this one. Okay. Now, that's so good. <laughs> when I make this, everybody just gobbles it up. So it's probably one of those recipes that I'm going to end up putting in my new cookbook, which I'm working on. And it's going to be a salad and bread cookbook. And it takes about probably about a year to develop recipes for a cookbook. So it's going to be in the long run making, but you get the recipe right now. And I will continue to do this. And some of the recipes I've already put on this podcast are going to appear in that book too. So, but there's always going to be more. So it's going to contain more than I put on this podcast for sure. So I hope that you're enjoying my podcast. Hey, give me a, drop me a line. Tell me what you like, what you don't like. And I'm still working on getting some more chefs on the show. So much fun to talk to people. I found one on Facebook. We just got to line up our times and get it on. It's so great to hear from different people and how they developed their cooking style and what they tend to focus on, what they've found to be delicious in their life and in their family cooking and just for themselves. It's just a great way to explore and expand your cooking repertoire, your world. Hey, push your boundaries. It's always about talking about pushing your boundaries in all these different areas. How about pushing your boundaries when cooking? You know, it's such a simple joy every day to have delicious food. And it's a way to enjoy life that is easy, simple, and doable every day, even simple recipes. So, so, so you don't get stuck on these like super boring ruts. You know, people talk about potatoes are boring. Potatoes are not boring. Potatoes are not boring. Potatoes are not boring. I'm going to say it in multiple voices because it's true. Potatoes are not boring. Okay. 
So <laughs> let's get to this recipe. Now, I love this recipe. I was just trying to think of something different to do with potatoes, and they're so versatile. That's why they're not boring, because you can do so much with them. I was like, what can I do different for my family? So I took these yellow potatoes that I had gotten at Sam's Club, which gave me a giant bag. Every time I go to Sam's Club, it's like all this massive, huge stuff, and it's so crazy, right? But it's great. So this great big bag of yellow potatoes. Instacart. Groceries delivered in as little as one hour. Free delivery on your first order, $35. Save yourself that trip to the market. Instacart delivers groceries in as fast as one hour. They connect you with personal shoppers in your area to shop and deliver groceries from your favorite stores. Free delivery on your very first order over $35. Following the link in the show notes, let's Instacart know we sent you and help support our show. Multiple stores available. Shop all of your favorites on a single order. The products you love from your local stores. Hand selected by shoppers based on your preferences. Delivery to your door in as fast as one hour. Instacart highlights deals to help you save money. Don't we all want that? Find everything you usually buy and get smart suggestions for new items. Instacart picks the freshest produce and keeps your eggs safe too. Woohoo! Those are things I want. Try it out today. You will love it. And so I started to chop them up into small pieces. Like the pieces are smaller than I, I often do. So that was my first change. And then, so I did about a half a bowl's worth. Now, that, this is kind of flexible. I did enough potatoes to cover the entire cookie sheet. And so, depending on how many you want to do, if you do less than that, you could just do less of the seasoning, or maybe you don't even need to worry about that because it'll just fall to the bottom of the bowl. But then I took in a separate bowl, one-fourth cup avocado oil. If you use avocado oil, it makes it a little different. It was really good. And then to that avocado oil, add one teaspoon Lowry seasoned salt, one teaspoon garlic powder, one-fourth teaspoon black pepper, and one teaspoon oregano leaves. So I call this salted oregano potatoes. Mmm, yummy. And then, so once you have that that oil mixture all mixed together, stir it really good. Then you're going to pour it over your potatoes and stir those really good. And you're going to roast these potatoes at 425 degrees until the bottoms are golden. And for me, in my oven, for the size of potatoes I cooked, that was about 45 minutes. And so they looked golden, they looked yummy. And when we tried them, we were like, "Ooh, this is a good recipe. And when my middle son came down, he's always our food critic. He always has, a, you know, opinions about food. And it's great to hear his feedback because he tells it like it is. And he's like, oh, those potatoes were good. I'm like, yes, that is endorsement for a good recipe. We <laughs> hear it from him because he's so discerning. And he likes to cook himself. So it's super fun to hear his opinion. And I really hope to help urge that along where he likes to cook and try different things and make food. And he he's really interesting. He's a teenager, but he really likes the authentic food, like the homemade food. You know, he kind of, sometimes he'll turn his nose up at things that aren't homemade. Like it's just kind of interesting. And I think it's a great authenticity in him that he really enjoys food and, you know, just a great thing for exploration and to promote in a kid because it's so much healthier for us to eat homemade food, right? Than all these prepared foods that have preservatives and all that in there. Takes more time, obviously, to cook homemade. We all know that. To cook gourmet. We all know that. And but it's so much fun and it's so much more delicious, right? Do you agree? I think so. So these are three great recipes and combine them all and you've got this great yummy spread. And so much you could do. And and what I like is that while the potatoes are cooking, you could be working on your egg bowls. And maybe you start with the bread because the bread cooks for an hour and then it has to cool and sit out anyway. So 
when I am approaching a meal, I try to plan out when am I going to make what, you know, because you want it to all be done similar times. You can keep things warm, but this gets to be the challenge in cooking for a family or a large group. And well, even for small, I guess I shouldn't say that for even one or two people, the challenge is getting everything done at the right time. So I guess my suggestion would be is to start with the bread, because even if that gets done before everything else, it's fine. It can sit out. It has to cool anyways. So I would start with the bread, then maybe get, you know, chop up all your stuff. Sometimes I find it nice to have everything chopped up first, and then I'm not stressing like, oh, my gosh, I need to chop this because I'm not making this timeline, that timeline. So to make yourself be more happy and relaxed as you cook, maybe sipping on some coffee instead of feeling that panic rise in you, chop everything up first. That's my suggestion. <laughs> I've done it the other way around and I'm like a scramble. Ah, I can't get this done, right? I can't get this done in time. And then there's like panic and it's like, you don't want to ruin the food. You want it to be as good as possible. So why add that stress in your life? Chop it all up first. Go there, do it. Let's say, um not going to hurt you to wait a little bit longer. Chop that up and then put them all in bowls. Line them up so that it's ready where you can just pop it in the pan when it's time. And, you know, while that stuff is cooking, the bowls are obviously more a little bit more intensive. But the potatoes are really easy to mix up too. So then you could actually do the bread, then start the potatoes and then pop them in the oven because the potatoes are pretty quick, right? You just got this oil, you got all these spices, you stir that up. So that's chop the potatoes, Make your little oil mixture and then put it on the potatoes and get it in the oven and then do the egg bowls. You can keep your potatoes warm too if you happen to take too long, if you take longer than 45 minutes to get those egg bowls ready. The order of things matters, you know what I mean? Like I feel like that's a thing with cooking and learning how to cook. You have to kind of think ahead a little bit and be like, okay, this is going to be done. What's going to be the, what's going to be taking the longest in the downtime? And then you, while that one is passively cooking, you're doing the more active things. So it's a mindset and a way of thinking about cooking and planning your meal and planning making your meal that can make things a little bit easier if you think ahead of time. The bread can be done way ahead of time. Like you could do it hours beforehand. You know, you say you wake up at 5 a.m. <laughs> or 6 like I do. I always wake up at 6.30. Then you could do the bread at that time and then just let it sit. But then beware of the people who come around and want to eat it beforehand. <laughs> you get the little lurkers were like, oh, what'd you make over there, mom? <laughs> I always let them have some though. And then we just put it out for the meal too. If there's any left, right, they might totally demolish it and be like, mm, this is yummy. So maybe you need to meter them a little bit and be like, eh, take one slice and then let's leave the rest for the breakfast or the brunch. But this is a great little bread too for with coffee or tea or any time of day. Milk. Oh, it's really good with milk because of the chocolate and the banana and the peanut butter because it's a rich, yummy bread and it's sweet. And I love that it uses Splenda because it is less sugar, but it still tastes amazing, right? And you do get some sugar, of course, from the chocolate chips. So you're not sugarless. Also from the bread. So it's not completely sugarless. Bread, I mean bananas, huh? You know, you got the natural sugar from the bananas in there too, but that's okay, right? Natural sugars from fruits and vegetables are the ones that are the, they're okay to have versus all this white sugar. So I love using the Splenda in this recipe and Splenda is so weird. It's weird stuff. It's really fluffy. Have you ever used it? And when you stir it with the butter, it just, it, it, it does cream differently than sugar, but you totally mixes and it meshes and it works just fine. So it's just something to get used to. If you've never tried Splenda, I urge you to try it. Some of the sugar substitutes out there I have not tried, but Splenda is one that I have. I mean, I've tried them like in coffee, you know, like a little equal or something like if you're at a restaurant, but Splenda is really the only one I've bought. Although I did get one for free once from a company that wanted me to promote it. And I forget the name of it, but it was good too. You, you was very concentrated. Geez, I wish I could remember the name of it so I could tell you. <laughs> I'll have to look at it. I still have a little bit left in my pantry. But there are options to sugar out there. And 
using things like Splenda and bananas to sweeten foods and breads. It's a great way to make it sweet yet healthier because we Americans, we like our sweet. I've heard people be like, oh, Americans just want something sweet. (laughs) Well, maybe that's true, but we like what we like and this is what we grew up. So this is how we are, right? But we might want to shed the sugar. So this is a way to get sweetness that we desire without having it be the white sugar. It's Splenda. It's bananas. And it is it is sugar from chocolate chips. I mean, you could try this with, I'm sure they make sugar-free chocolate chips. If you really want to omit more sugar, try that. I know they do make those because I've seen them before. Again, I haven't explored buying that much. Something to look to for me also to reduce more sugar within a sweet bread. And it's still sweet. That's the great part. I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting and recipes to try. I will put the recipes down in the podcast show notes. Hopefully I can get all three of them to fit. If I can't, I'll just try to make sure I get them to fit. I can be kind of cryptic in the description just so I can get all three of them in there. I think that's just valuable. I mean, you can listen to me and write them down, right? That's, That's doable. But sometimes it's nice to just see it instead of, because, you know, in the podcast, you got to like find the spot. I wish there was a way for me to like, well, actually, I could do that if I really tried. I can make chapters um, where the recipe, where I say the recipe, but what's also really easy to is to, for you to refer down into the podcast show notes where you can see where I have typed out the text of each recipe. So then you can just easily refer to that. I hope you subscribe to my podcast and give me a review, a rating. I would love to hear your thoughts. I don't have one yet. Be my first person to give me a rating, a review. I would love it. I hope you enjoyed this. And again, my website is juliehogwriter.com, romance writer, YA romance, young adult. Hungry Hearts is my book. I also have One Dish, Two Diets out, the cookbook, and American Midwest Cooking, quiches is the other one. And I also have Ways to Honor Your Mom After She Has Passed Away, 40 Ways, 40 Ways to Honor Your Mom After She Has Passed Away. That's a little booklet that I created in response to what I've learned over the years, and it was a very popular blog post, so I turned it into a little book to make it more available for people great ways to celebrate your mom. Coming up Mother's Day soon, so it's a great book if you've lost your mom, your mom has passed away, or someone you know. It's a great little book to give to someone to help them celebrate their mom rather than focusing on the negative. But there are great ways to celebrate your mom and turn it into a positive. Okay, well, thank you so much for listening to this, and I hope you have an amazing weekend. I am kind of on the path of doing this twice a month right now. With all the other things I do, that seems to be working out well. So at this point going forward, I probably will be doing about two podcast episodes a month. And I hope you enjoy. I'm so excited you're here and I'm so grateful you joined me. You have an amazing yummy day and go make some awesome food. Enjoy. Bye-bye now. Oh, and don't forget to check out the Instacart deals. You ever tried Instacart? It's a great way to get stuff to your house quickly. If you forgot something, they can get it to you and you can get discounts and deals on your first orders. It's a great service. Check it out. Links down in the podcast notes to learn more about Instacart. All right. You have a great day. Bye-bye now.